going to go ahead and get started. Uh, but again, just in case we have anybody new in here, I'm going to do a quick reset because, y'all, it is Monday and I forgot to start my YouTube video. So, okay, so <laughs> quick reset. My name is Buffy Hood. I am a jeweler with Career Designs Jewelry. I've been doing it for a little over nine years. So, I use Periscope and YouTube as a way to help my fellow direct sellers especially those who are also in Premier Design. Um, so today, real quick, I have a quick question. For those of you, um, first off, for those of you who are joining us live, thank you so very much for being here. And if you're joining us on the replay, don't forget those hearts do work too on Periscope. So if I am sharing something that is of useful content to you, something that you can appreciate, go ahead and tap on that screen, show some love, okay? And then for those of you joining us on YouTube, if you'd ever like to be a part of our live broadcasting so that you can join in on the interaction, come on over to the Periscope app and follow me at Buffy Hood. All right, now, quick question. How many of you have ever felt just totally lost in your business and you, you just keep kind of seeing disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Um, put a one in the box if you have kind of dealt with that. And maybe you're not currently going through that season, but you have, okay? So if, if you've been there, just put a one in the box. That way I know who might be out there hearing this today, okay? Perfect. All right. So here's the thing. This was something that I saw this morning. And I just kind of went, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so the first statement is, maybe the disappointment is the destiny in disguise. Okay, and that really kind of threw me for a loop because so often when things don't go our way, all right, we tend to get disappointed. We tend to think, man, this just really isn't moving fast enough. Or this isn't going where I thought it was going to. Or, um, you know, I really needed three bookings tonight, and I only got one, or um, maybe it was retail, maybe it was a jeweler, a prospective jeweler was hopefully going to be joining your team, and then suddenly they change their mind and they don't, okay? So maybe you have found yourself in some of those different situations, or maybe others similar to it, where the fact of the matter was, you were extremely disappointed about, yes, or no one shows up, okay? But you became extremely disappointed and missed that there could have possibly been your destination in disguise given through that disappointment, okay? So perhaps it is that God is trying to lead you in a different way in your business, all right? Perhaps it is his way of trying to say, you know what, let's try this. Let's try doing this. Let's try doing that. But if you wouldn't have had those disappointments, you may not have attempted to do something different, okay? What about the fact of when you have someone who doesn't show up, okay? Maybe you go to a show and your hostess is expecting 10 people and then you get there and absolutely no one shows, okay? Now what if, what if God intended for you to be there that night for that hostess to show her that there is someone who cares about her? because they showed up. There is someone who loves her because they came to her show. And guess what? When you got there and there was no guest, you showed her that you loved her by not leaving, by not saying, oh, well then, if you're not going to have guests here to buy, then you're not worth my time either, okay? You don't do that, all right? Instead, you stay and you love on each person who does happen to come. If it's just a low attendance show, or if no one comes, listen, y'all, you need to be there to love on that hostess. And you need to be there to say, you know what, girl, that is okay. It happens. It happens. You're not the only one that this happens to. But I tell you what we're going to do instead. What do you say that we go ahead and get out some jewelry and we just have some girl time and have some fun? Okay? Yes. Okay, so you never know. I listen. I had that too. I had a girl schedule a show. I booked it, and then I saw where the show was going to be held, and realized that there are. I, I forget what I. I don't even remember what the stats were. Okay, but it was like two shootings 
every four days within half mile of her home. And it was kind of like, oh, my word. I, you know, and I just kept praying, Lord, if that is not where you want me to be, then I'm going to be so bold as to ask you to go ahead and cancel that show. Because if I'm not intended to be there in that neighborhood on that evening, then take it from me. And he did. She rescheduled. Okay. At first she rescheduled and I thought, oh Lord, have mercy. Okay. But when her next show date was coming up, she wound up contacting me and said, you know what? This just is not a good time right now. Um, and I was so thankful. Okay. Not many people would be thankful for a canceled show. Um, yeah, I, listen, mine was in Philadelphia. Okay. And I, I always, anytime that it's a city I'm not really familiar with, I always look it up. Um, after I leave the show, I look it up to see what the, you know, what the area is and see if it's someplace that maybe, um, I've been close to or things like that, just to kind of see where it was. And when I saw where this was, and it actually like pulled up a, a picture of her home, like her, her address. Okay. So I, I clicked on it, um, because it shows her home. So it was like, oh, okay, cool. Because then I can see exactly what the house looks like. I know what I'm looking for, et cetera. But then as I scrolled down, it started showing the crime rate and was showing this and showing that. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. So yes, listen, I always encourage you to type in the address of the places that you're going to, because when you do that and you just type that into like Google, you type in the address, many times it'll bring up like a, like a Zillow listing or something where you can see what the house looks like, because that is a huge time saver when you are on your way to somebody's house. Um, if you can kind of get an idea as to what part of the neighborhood they're in based on the homes that are being shown around it, et cetera. Okay. So I always do that. All right. Now this was, this was another, another part of this. Okay. And I, I won't say that it was another part of this. It was another thing that I saw that I felt really does kind of tie in with it and, and just follow me here for a moment. Okay. So the next statement is don't let the opinions of complacent people set the limits of your ambition. And again, that struck me. Okay. Because here's the thing. There are a lot of people out there who will tell you, you can't do this especially when they find out about some of the struggles that you're having, when they hear that, oh, you had another show canceled or you did this or you did that. And they then look at that and go, you know what? You need to just hang this up. You are not good at this. You're not going to do well in this. You need to just give this up. These things are a scam. These things are this. These things are that. Okay. Many times, and please hear this and understand this. Many times people who do not support you, and we've touched on this very lightly when it comes to when you have, especially family and friends who are not supporting you, okay? Here's something that I want you to hear, and I want you to hear this very carefully. If anyone that is close to you, that loves you, is ever sitting there saying, you know what? I don't think you should do this. I don't think you should do this. But do you know in your heart of hearts, this is where you're supposed to be? Understand that especially if it is something that is going to make you better, if this is something that is going to help you become a better person, a better, you know, someone with a better servant's heart, someone who is um, just progressing and growing, okay? If it's something that is going to help you grow in your faith, that is going to help you grow in your spiritual walk, and you have people going, I don't think you should do that. I don't know why you're doing that, okay? Listen, be very understanding that nine times out of ten, they are doing it because they are fearful that if you grow too much, they will be left behind, okay? Do not Take it for them actually being serious that they don't think you can do it. Because here's the thing. When it comes to what we are capable of, we are capable of as much as God wants to see have happen in our life. And when we give it to him and let him have control of it, and we simply do the work and put in the effort and we, we rest our, um, our faith on him blessing those actions 
and him blessing those efforts and things like that. And we know that without a shadow of a doubt, that even when we are having those difficult times, that this is exactly where God wants us to be. Stop letting other people determine how far you can go. Okay? And make sure that they understand that even when you do reach for the stars and you hit them, that you're not leaving them. Okay? Unless, of course, they are a... Um, poisonous relationship in your life that needs to be let go of, all right? But here's the thing. In most situations, people are simply worried about being left behind while you choose to grow and do something that is going to better yourself, you know? And I never understood that. When I would hear people, as an example, you know, I, I saw people who were saying, you know, hey, they decided to go back to school, and they were being met with people who didn't support it. Now listen, <laughs> why would someone be against someone going and getting more education to better themselves and to give themselves some additional opportunities in life? Why would someone want to hold them back from that? Well, they want to hold them back from that because they're afraid they'll be left behind. They're afraid that that person will then suddenly outgrow them and not want to be a part of their life anymore. Um, have a past jeweler that wasn't successful and can't believe I'm still in. Yes. Yes. Okay. And exactly. Yes. Envious or jealous. You got it. So here's the thing. When that happens, don't take that on. Don't, don't take those comments and feel like, oh, well, I, yeah, you know what? Maybe I can't do this. Maybe I can't. Don't let them talk you into that. Don't allow that. Okay. Now, if God tells you it's time for you to move on from something, that is a completely different thing. If you are feeling led to go do something different, if you are feeling led to change a certain area of your life, that is completely different. Um, or sometimes family doesn't understand your business. Exactly. But here's why they don't understand it. They have either one, they have never been a part of something like this. Okay. Or two, they were in another direct sales company that truly... In my opinion, there's nothing else out there that I have seen personally that can even come close to comparing to Premier. Okay? That's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Um, I know that everyone is in the direct sales business that they're in because they feel it's the best thing out there. And kudos to them for that. If they're not in it for that reason, they're already in the wrong business. Okay? So... But, but here's the thing, don't allow other people to make you feel inferior. Don't allow other people to determine the limits that you can reach if you have the ambition to do so, okay? And many times it's people simply going, well, you know what, I once tried that and I didn't get nothing. I didn't get nowhere, so you're not going to either, okay? That doesn't work that way. Um, went to Sam's Club yesterday and the lady that works in the bakery booked the show with you. Awesome. That is wonderful. Congrats on that. Um, so I know we have had a couple more people pop in. So let me tell you real quick the two things, uh, the two statements that I was focusing on today. The first is maybe the disappointment is your destiny in disguise. Okay. And the other one is don't let the opinions of complacent people set the limits of your ambitions. Okay. Because here's the thing. There is a difference between being content and being complacent, okay? And you need to make sure that you are taking a look at that, okay? Don't become so complacent that you say, well, you know what? I've steadily been able to do two shows a month, and, and that's not, I mean, that works well for me. It's not, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's okay. So, I mean, I have two shows on my calendar every month for the next, like, six months, so, like, I mean, I don't need to worry about making any additional contacts or things like that. You know, when you become complacent and you just start thinking that, you know, just, okay, where I'm at is just good enough. Like, this is just it, okay? And you don't strive to become better, to, to grow, to, you know, reach the limits that God actually has for you. We've had this conversation before, too, that, 
You know, God does not create us to be mediocre. He creates us to do amazing and wonderful things, okay? Jenny, I'm right there with you. Jenny says, I don't want good enough anymore. Exactly. You know, so I have just, for myself personally, I have, you know, I took a hard look at these two things and went, first off, please understand that for those of you who have ever felt this way, okay, so real quick, how many of you have ever been told you can't do this business or you shouldn't because it's not going to work? Put a one in the box. If you've ever been told you can't do this business or you shouldn't because it's not going to work, put a one in the box. Okay? And the reason why I wanted to ask these questions today is because I need you ladies to know and understand that you are not alone. Okay? The majority of us out there in this business have dealt with this on some level. And for some, they're still going through it. They're still dealing with it on a regular basis. You know, I, again, I, I will share that when I'm at my parties, one of the questions that people always ask me is, how long have you been in this business? And as soon as I say over nine years, they're like, I mean, because to them, that is just a foreign thought because people don't typically come into direct sales and stay. So when you have that, when people see that staying power, it makes them want to sit up and pay a little bit more attention and be like, well, there has to be something here because why on earth would she stay with it for nine years if it's nothing, you know? Um, I have not been told by him not to do the business. Amen, Jenny. Amen. Um, okay, so awesome. So, Anita, so you were told that you could do it, just you're struggling with the belief in yourself. Awesome. Um, my hubby sees my low times and questions why I continue because that's just it. They are strictly a period of low. It doesn't mean that it won't go back up, okay? And so that is that is one of the biggest things that I think people tend to forget um, is we will have hills and valleys, hills and valleys, hills and valleys. But let me tell you something. When you reach those hills, the view from the top is amazing. And even when it means that you sink back down into those, those valleys, you get enough momentum, you can go back right up that hill. So it is just a matter of not giving up, okay? The only difference between someone who came in for a year and left versus Janet and Gary Googe or Randy and Elizabeth Draper, okay, the only difference between someone who came in for a year and left versus them is they chose not to quit when things got hard, okay? Um, yes, yes, okay. So we have to develop the mentality of showing people, look, we're in this for the long haul. This is not just a hobby this is not just a trend this is not just a fad of I'm gonna come in and do it and then get tired of it okay like you got a girl not giving up just keep calling you got it so the biggest thing though that I want you all to know is that at some point in time and, and still occasionally okay um, you had to share more of the good with your husband so yes yes and and that that means a lot. If all they're ever seeing or hearing about your business is when things are troubled, that's going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult. Okay. It's going to be hard for them to see the value if the only thing they are ever seeing is your lows. So you need to be very careful that when you're going through those lows, don't you go vent to anyone other than your upline. That's it. Okay. Uh, sell party light just so you can get your candle discount from here's your job. Yes. Yes. So, so here's the thing. When you are having troubles in your business, don't vent to anyone, you know, just anyone who will listen. Go to your upline. That's it. You don't go to your sideline. You don't go to your downline. You don't go to your spouse. You don't go to your, um, to your friends. You don't go to your mother. You don't go to, no, you go to your upline. That's it. Because here's the thing. Your upline are the only people who are going to be able to help guide you out of that struggle. That's it. No one else is going to be able to do that. Okay. And even if it is your sideline that you're going to, even, okay, here's the thing. It's not to say that your sideline and your downline don't have the information needed to be able to help guide you. But here's the thing. It is not your job 
to bring them down. Maybe they are on a high up here and then you start talking about all these lows that you hit after you've been in for a year or two and they've only been in for a couple months and they're rocking and rolling and you're going, I just don't understand this and blah, blah, blah. Because here's the thing, you can then transfer your fears and your doubts, etc., onto your sideline or your downline, okay? Your upline, they get it. They are there to help you, okay? So go to them. All right, so I hope everyone understands where I'm coming from on that because I'm certainly not saying that we can't learn something from those brand new baby jewelers because we absolutely can. But then you go to them and you simply ask a question. You don't vent about your business, okay? You ask them, what are you doing to be so successful? You do not vent about your business. You got that? Everyone understand that? <laughs> okay. So, but the biggest thing that I want you to know is that I have struggled with and still do occasionally struggle with these two things, okay? You are not alone in this. Y'all have seen all the people who put ones in the box that they too have struggled with this. They have dealt with this, all right? But the biggest thing is you have to be willing to do two things. For one, you have to be willing to put your faith in God. That if God is still telling you this is where you need to be, then you have to have faith that he is going to produce the results that you need to do to keep this rolling. Okay? I uh, only have seven shows this month, had four canceled. Listen, that is still a phenomenal month. Okay? So here's the thing. When you have those shows canceled, what you need to do is you need to be praising God anyway. Because here's the thing. You have no idea what he might be saving you from. You have no idea what he needs you for. And during that time when you were scheduled to have that show, you have no idea what he might be saving you for, as in there is something better coming. So when those cancellations happen, you need to make sure that you are still praising God and thanking him and saying, you know what, Lord, I don't know what your intentions are for me at that time. But I'm going to praise you anyway because I know that you have something better in store for me. Now, hear me when I say this. Hear me when I say this. That doesn't mean that you don't keep in touch with your hostesses. Okay, now, Tracy, I know better. I know that you're doing what you need to do. All right? But some people will book a show and then they will have no further contact with that hostess until the day of the show. Don't do that. Okay? If you are doing that and that hostess cancels, that is your mess up. That is not a God thing, okay? But if you are doing everything that you can to keep that hostess excited about her show and to be there to serve her in any way possible to help her have the best show that she can possibly have and she still cancels, praise him, okay? Praise him because there is something that he needs you to do instead there's something that he is saving your time for instead as an example i'm going to give you a real quick example and then i'm going to let y'all go so as an example a couple years ago they had a um the disney trip okay through premiere and i missed the disney trip by 600 cv was what i missed it by that drove me insane okay because I had, if, if my shows would have held, I know I would have met it without a doubt because in one month, in one month, I had 10 shows rescheduled, 10, and they all rescheduled for after the qualification period. Now, listen, it, don't say, don't say sorry for that because listen, what happened was during the week that I should have been at Disney with my family, instead, we were here at home, and my girls had an opportunity to hear a sermon that led to them requesting to be baptized that week, okay? So hear me when I say this, all right? It is sometimes those disappointments are your destiny. Sometimes those disappointments are needed to happen but here's the thing. It's okay for us to be disappointed briefly. Okay? It is okay for us to be sad briefly. All right? But it is not okay for us to 
harbor that and vent about it and be angry about it and talk to anybody who will listen and tell them that, you know, I'm just mad. I'm just angry. I'm just this. I'm just that. Okay. We need to stop that. Yes. We need to discipline our disappointments. You got it. You got it because we need to be able to look at that and say, you know what, if this was not God's intent for me and he kept me from this, there has to be a good reason. Why? Because God is good and God is faithful and God loves you more than anybody or anything ever will in this life. So we need to understand that God has our best interest at heart. He doesn't want to see us fail. Okay. But we might need to fail our way to success. All right. He doesn't want to see us disappointed. That's like you think about how you feel when you have to disappoint your children, when your children want something or, or need something and you can't provide that to them. Do you understand? Like, you know how that feels when they get disappointed about that. But now listen, here's the thing. God absolutely can do anything for you. But sometimes what we want isn't what we need. Sometimes what we want isn't what is best for us at that time, in that moment. And he knows that. So we just need to have faith that he knows what he's doing. And we need to let him have his time <laughs> and do what he needs to do in our life. Okay? Yes, and that's heartbreaking, isn't it, Jenny? It's heartbreaking. And you know that his heart has to break every single time that we have that disappointment. But listen, listen to this, okay? How much better do you feel when you know your kids are disappointed, but they say, you know what, that's okay. That's okay. You know, you know, I'm a little disappointed about it. And, but you know what, it's okay. It's okay. We'll do something different. Or I don't need that. Or whatever. How much better does, does that feel to hear that? For them to say that, okay? Now, how often do we do that for God? How often do we say, well, you know what, I didn't get that, but you know what, that's okay. That's okay. All right. We need to let him off the hook every once in a while because there's a reason he's doing what he needs to do in our life. And we need to just be appreciative of that and be appreciative of the things that we have and understand that he will get us to where he needs us to be as long as we continue to just keep chugging along and just keep working and putting forth those efforts. So that is what I'm going to challenge you on this week and every week from here on out. Okay is that I want to challenge you that when those disappointments come along, be willing to consider them as possibly being a God thing. And on the other hand, if you can look at those disappointments and realize that you had some sort of hand in that, maybe you weren't doing what you needed to do, then you need to change that for the next time. Okay. But if you've done all you could and those disappointments still happen, know that there is a reason behind it and just trust God. Just trust him. And when people are trying to tell you that, hey, you shouldn't go for that. That's going to be too hard. I can't believe you're even trying for that. I can't believe you're even doing that business. I can't believe, whatever. Do not allow complacent people to set the limits of your ambitions. Instead, give it to God. So, y'all, that is what I'm going to leave you with today. I kept you for four minutes longer than I anticipated, but I'm going to let you all go. Tomorrow is Tuesday. It's our Tips and Tricks Tuesday. Um, thank you so much for that, Tracy. I so appreciate you being here. All right, so tomorrow's Tips and Tricks Tuesday. We will be back here tomorrow at 8 a.m., and I look forward to seeing you. Have a blessed day, guys. Thanks. See if it'll let me go. It's being weird. Gotta love it. Sorry, guys. Bye.